A bug starts at a vertex of an equilateral triangle. On each move, it randomly selects one of the two vertices where it is not currently located and crawls along a side of the triangle to that vertex. Given that the probability that the bug moves to its starting vertex on its 10th move is m over n, where m and n are relatively prime positive integers, find m plus n. So this last sentence right here, where m and n are relatively prime positive integers, that essentially says we have the positive version of this fraction in lowest in simplified form, I guess you could say. You, you can't simplify it anymore. So let's just think about the problem. We have an equilateral triangle here. We have an equilateral triangle with three vertices, A, B, and C. And our bug, our bug is going to start, let's say, at vertex A. So this is our this is our bug right here. And on each move, it'll randomly select one of the two vertices. So on its first move, it will either go to vertex B or then vertex C. And then depending whether it went there, if it went to vertex C, then on its next move, it'll either go to vertex B or vertex A. If it went to vertex B, on its next move, it'll either go to vertex A or vertex C. C. So let's just think about it. We want to figure out, let's see, and crawls alongside, given that the probability that the bug moves to its starting vertex on its 10th move. So we want to see the probability of it moving to vertex A on its 10th move. On its tenth move, so let's just let's just think about what happens in each move. The probability of moving to one of the vertices in a given move. So let's say. Let's say we have, let me just number these. So let's say we have move one over here. Move, let me make a column. So we have vertex A, B, and C. Vertices A, B, and C. And let's think about move one. So let me make it clear that this is a row. And then on move one, what's the probability of moving to vertex A? Well, you're already at vertex A, and it says the bug is always going to go to one of the other two vertices. So your probability of moving to vertex A is 0 on move 1. What's the probability of moving to vertex B? Well, it's going to be 1 half. What's the probability of moving to vertex C? Well, it's going to be 1 half as well. Half a chance going there, half a chance going there. And obviously, all of the probabilities have to add up to 1, because it's going to do something on that, on that move. Now let's think about move 2. Let's think about move two. So what's the probability? What's the probability of now moving to vertex A? Well, there was a there's a one half chance that we were already at B. If we were already at B, if we were already at B, there will now be a one half chance of moving back to A. So this is one half, one half times one half. But that's, that's only the situation if we were already at B. If we were already at C, which there was a 1 half probability of that, then there would also be a 1 half probability of moving to A. So this is going to be the 1 half chance that we were already at C times, given that we were already at C, the probability that we move to A. So this is 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, plus 1 half times 1 half plus 1 fourth. This is going to be equal to. This is equal to 1 half. Now, what's the probability of moving to B in the second turn? Now, the only, the only place other than B, so obviously you can't move from B to B. The only place that the bug can move from B in the second turn is going to be C. Because we know in the second turn, or at the end of the first turn, that he's not going to be at A. He's either going to be at B or C. If he's already at B, there's no way he's going to go back to B. So the only situation is if the bug is already at C, if the bug is already at C, and there's a 1 half chance of that happening, so that's this number right here. If the bug is already at C, there, and that's the 1 half probability, then there's going to be a further 1 half probability that it moves to B. So it's going to be 1 half times 1 half, which is equal to 1 fourth. Now what's the probability of moving to C? Well, it's the exact same logic. The bug's not going to be on vertex A after the first move. There's a 1 half probability. There's a 1 half probability that it's going to be at B. And then if it's at B, then there's a 1 half probability. Then there's a 1 half probability that it'll go to C. That it'll go to C. So this is going to be 1 fourth as well. In general, let me just draw some, let me just do something a little general here. Let's say that we have turn, let, I'll erase this in a second because I think we might want to use this real estate over here. Let's say we have, we, let's say in move n, the probability at vert of being at vertex A is probability A. 
the probability of being at vertex B is probability of landing on B on move N. And the probability of C is P. This is the probability of moving to vertex C on move N. Now let's think about the probability of being each at each of these nodes on n plus 1, or moving to each of these nodes on move n plus 1. So in, to get to a on move n plus 1, you have to either be at, prob at, at b or at c. You can't be at a and stay at a. So the, the, the probability of moving to a in your n plus 1th move is going to be the probability of being at b times 1 half. right? Because if you're at b, there's a 1 half chance you're going to go to a plus the probability of being at C in your last in your at the end of the last move times one half. The only you, there's a half chance if you're at C you'll move to A, there's a half chance if you're at B you'll move to A. Now what's the probability of going to B? Well there's two ways that you can get to B. You could start at A, so it's you could start at A, so the probability of being at A times one half, or you could start at C. So it's plus the probability of C times one half. If you were actually doing this problem under time pressure, you wouldn't necessarily have to go through this. But I just want to make it clear what's going on here. And finally, what's the probability of landing in C on your nth plus one term? Well it's going to be the probability, it's going to be the probability of being at A times one half plus the probability of being at B times 1 half. So hopefully this makes the pattern a little bit clearer of what, what's happening. No matter what, a is going to be the average. a in the next move is going to be the average, essentially, of the probabilities of being at b and c in the last move. And you see that. The average of 1 half and 1 half is 1 half. The probability of it being b at b in the n plus 1 move is going to be the average of the probabilities of being at a and c in the last move. The average of 0 and 1 half is 1 fourth. And the same logic for c. Average of 0 and 1 half is 1 fourth. But now that'll hopefully simplify things a little bit more for our brains. Let's, go, let's keep going through the, I'll leave this here. I said I was going to erase it. But let's keep going this way. And let me continue the columns. So we have columns a, or rows a, b, and c. And now we are on move. Three. I'm just continuing it down here. So what's the probability of move being at A in move three? Well, we just said it's going to be the average of B and C, and B and C are one fourth. So the average of one fourth and one fourth is going to be one fourth. What's the probability of being at B? What's the average of A and C in move two? Average of one half and one fourth, or that's the same thing as the average of what four eighths, four eighths and two eighths. That's three eighths. 3 eighths. And then we're going to get the exact same value for C, 3 eighths. And I think you see another pattern here. B and C are always going to be the same thing. And since B and C are always going to be the same thing, their average is going to be that value. And it's going to be the probability of being at A in the next turn. So let's just keep doing this. And we could go all the way to 10, but maybe we'll see some type of pattern here. So on our fourth move, on our fourth move, what's the probability of being at A? Well, it's just the average of B and C. So it's going to be 3 eighths. It's just going to be 3 eighths. We can just take this value here. And then what's the probability of being at b? What's going to be the average of a and c? Average of a and c. And so let's see, I think we'd have to go over 16. This is 4 over 16. 4 over 16 plus 6 over 16 is 10 over 16. 10 over 16, which is, did I do? Oh, and then we have to divide it by 2, which is 5 over 16. 5 over 16. Did I do that right? Let me just do this on the corner. I don't want to make a careless mistake here. So we want to do 1 fourth. We want to do 1 fourth is 4 over 16 plus 6 over 16. And then we want to divide that by 2. We're taking the average. So it's 10 over 16 divided by 2, which is equal to 5 over 16. All right, so let me clear this out so that I don't waste valuable real estate. All right, so then this is also going to be 5 or 16, because it's going to be the average of 3 eighths and 1 fourth as well. So it's going to be 5, uh, well, let me just switch. Well, I'll switch colors in the next column. 5 over 16. Now we're in move 5. And we could keep going like this all the way to move 10, but hopefully we'll just see a pattern here. So in move 5, the probability of moving to A is going to be 5 over 16, the average of these two. 5 over 16. The probability of moving to B, you already see a pattern. It seems like you know we went from a 2 in the denominator, 4 in the denominator, 8 in the denominator, 16 in the denominator. I'm guessing that we're going to have to go to 32 over the denominator. And so we're going to take the average 
of 10 over 32, 10 over 32, and 12 over 32, and that's 11 over 32. And this is also going to be 11 over 32. Let's go to move 6. Let's go to move 6. So in, for A, it's going to be 11 over 11 over 32. And I'll just, seems like the pattern is holding. This is going to be something over 64. And so this is the average. This, if you multiply this times 4, you get 20. And then this is 20. 2 over 6 this is 20 over 64 this is 22 over 64 the average is going to be 21 so if we just wanted to keep extrapolating this let's see if there's a, a way I mean, we could actually just do the math I mean, do 7 8 9 10 we're only four moves away but actually let's see if we can see a pattern here I'd feel free to do that on your own if you're interested hopefully you'll get the right answer this is also going to be 21 over 64 move 7 Move 7 for A is easy. That's just going to be the average of these two guys, 21 over 64. But let's see if there's a pattern forming. So it looks like it looks like the prob for if and remember our question is we just want to look at the probability of moving to A on the tenth move. And so if you look at A, you start off with a denominator. You start off with a denominator. So this is 2 to the move plus minus 1. 1 over 2 to the move minus 1. It looks like it's always, because it's 1 over 2 to the 0. This is 1 over 2 to the 1. Then you have 1 over 2 squared. That's 1 less than 3. 1 over 2 to the 3rd. So it looks like, it looks like if you fast forward to the nth move, or even better, let's fast forward to the 10th move. So 7, 8, 9, and 10. This actually isn't a lot of math to fill in, but let's just figure it out. So if you 7, 8, 9, 10, so this is going to be 16, 32, 64. This is going to be 128. If we go with the pattern, this is going to be 256. And actually, if you have time, you can prove that this definitely is the pattern. And then this over here is going to be over 512. So we actually already figured out the end part. And let's see if we can figure out a pattern for the numerators here. We went from, see, we went 1, 3 to 5. So let's see. 5 is 3 plus 2, not 1. Then you go, you see, you have 5. Well, it looks like we're taking 2 times this. You're taking 2 times this and adding it to that to get that. 2 times 1, 2 times 1 plus 3 is 5. 2 times 3 plus 5 is 11. 2 times 5 plus 11 is 21. So let's just go with that. So 2 times 11, 2 times 11 is 22 plus 21 is 43. And then 2 times 21 is 42, plus 43 is 85. And then this is going to be 86 plus 85, right? 2 times 43 is 86. 86 plus 85 is, let's see, 85 times 2 is 170. So it's going to be 170, 171. And so if we believe what we just did, we get our answer. m plus n is going to be, is going to be 171 plus 512. So it's going to be 171, 512 plus 171, which is, which is, let's see, we're going to have 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus, so this comes 10, and then we get 703. No, no, wait, I just made a boneheaded mistake on the addition. Let me, let me. So 1 plus 7 is 8, not 10. I don't know why my brain was thinking that. And then 5 plus 1 is 6. So we get 683 as our answer. So that's that's m plus n, or the probability of moving to the to vertex a on the tenth turn is 171 over 512. And you can verify for yourself. It actually wasn't a lot more math just to go through it at this point. Or we could even prove to ourselves if we're interested that. Each successive term here is really equal to the previous term plus two times the term before that. Actually, let me just, let's just, just for fun, let's just prove it to ourselves. So let's say that we, this is the nth term. Our probability of being at a, let's say our probability of being at a is a over a over two to the n. It's a over two to the n. And what, and then our probability of being at b and c is going to be, let's call that. Let's call that b over, this power is always one higher power of 2. 2 to the n plus 1. And this right over here is also going to be the same probability. 2 over n plus 1. Then on the nth plus 1 term, the probability of being at a is just going to be the average of these two guys, which is going to be b times 2 to the n plus 1. And the probability of being at, remember this is b and this is c, 
this is a. The probability of being at b is going to be the average of a and c. So it's going to be a to the 2, and let me put it, multiply it by 2. So it's 2a over 2 to the n plus 1. I just multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, plus b over 2 to the n plus 1. And then all of that over 2. All of that over 2. So we're going to divide that the whole, let me not write it that way. We're going to divide that by 2. And that's going to be the same value for c. And actually, if we do a little bit of math here, this is going to be, this is going to be 2a plus b over 2a plus b over 2 to the n plus 2. 2 to the n plus 2. And so on the nth plus 2 move, our value for a is just going to be this thing right here, the average of two, these two guys, which is the exact same thing. So it's going to be 2a plus b over 2 to the n plus 2. So this verifies the pattern that we just thought about. Our powers of 2 are increasing. And if we go two terms forward, this term is equal to 2 times two terms before plus the term before, 2a plus b. So that's the pattern we used, so we can feel pretty good about our answer.